Hello, I'm Alex the Uncorable, and welcome to the first episode of Anime Month! Yes, that's right, for the entire month of March, once a week, I will be releasing a don't quote me on that, based on an anime movie, or an anime TV show. Basically, something anime that I want to talk about because this is a big topic and it's going to be fun. So, let's jump right into it with Dragon Ball Super Broly! Spoilers ahead, I guess, as well. Spoilers ahead for this. Okay, so just before I get started on the review, I just wanted to show this off real quick. Uh, so when I went to go and see the movie, they gave us a Dragon Ball Z card pack, and I got these these, these, cool, these cool cards. They look pretty cool as well. Um, for Gogeta and Broly. It looks cool, huh? Dragon Ball Super Broly. What can I say about it? So, I went to go see this film towards the start of February with two friends of mine. One of which is a big Dragon Ball fan, one of which is knows nothing about Dragon Ball whatsoever, and myself, who basically only watched Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid, stopping around the Android arc. And so, I had some knowledge of what was going on, one of us knew exactly what was going on, and the other one had no idea what was going on. FYI, when I went to go see Aquaman, I was going with this exact same friend and I had to explain to him what Dragon Ball Evolution was, his comparison to Dragon Ball Broly, and he just cringed so much. Dragon Ball Super Broly, which I'll just call Dragon Ball Broly or Broly for shortness, I guess? We'll find out. It starts off with King Vegeta, the ruler of the Saiyans on the World Saiyan, and he is introduced to the High Commander of his kind and ruling over a force called King Cold, and his son, Frieza, who's now running everything and calling it the Frieza Force. He gives him a bit of tech, and then he leaves, and King Vegeta isn't so happy about this. He then finds that this low-class Saiyan is in the same nurturing area as his son Vegeta, and his son Vegeta is supposed to be, like, super powerful, so he can't ascertain as to why this other kid should be here. And when it's revealed that he has a power rating higher than Vegeta's, he gets cranky and sends this kid, who is Broly, off to a planet in order to conquer it, but really it's a desolate wasteland is hoping the kid's gonna get killed. So Broly's father, completely upset by this, steals the spaceship and goes after him. It's essentially like reverse Superman. Like if Superman got sent off to say, Mercury, and then Jor-El followed him, because what baby can survive and be raised on a desert planet? Well, no same baby, that's for sure. And then we see the Saiyan planet get blown up by Frieza. Yep, we watch that happen. We see the few Saiyans that have survived, including Vegeta, Goku, and of course Broly, as well as the adults that are with them. We get a bit of a flash forward for all the stuff that happened through Dragon Ball, and we come to modern day, where we see exactly what happens to a child who's raised on a desert planet. They become a giant muscle-bound, almost brainless violence machine in the form of Broly, now fully formed and very dangerous. They are found by two members of the Frieza Force who are newly, who are newly formed, and he is brought to fight Goku and Vegeta because Frieza wants the Dragon Balls to make himself five inches taller. That is completely the reason why he wants to do it. And of course, it's all the Dragon Ball-y goodness from there. Lots of yelling, lots of level-ups, lots of punching and violence, and changing the very formation of a continent in order to suit the play. I'm not kidding there, by the way. They start in a place called the Ice Continent, then it becomes filled with volcanoes, and then it just be looks like Nevada. It's kind of crazy what the violence level will do for these people. It's a good movie. The only way I can really think of this movie is like watching one of the Pokemon movies. Basically, we're taking your characters and we're putting them up against a extremely strong, high-level character who's going to beat them up and is going to cause them a lot of pain. So we got to pull out some special power friendship dealio in order to deal with him. 
Well, that's what I thought going in, but I was apparently wrong. You see, within the story, Broly is treated like a weapon by his father. His father was angry at the how King Vegeta treated him, so he wants to use Broly as a weapon to get his revenge. Except King Vegeta is dead, so he's gonna go after our Vegeta, I guess? Prince Vegeta? Prince Vegeta, King of All Sands? Ruler of All Sands? Y you know the guy. And you know, Frieza is basically there to watch Broly take down Goku and Vegeta. Until, you know, Vegeta and Goku nope out of there through halfway through the battle for about an hour to fuse and Broly decides to go after the next most powerful thing to fight, which is Freezer, and he gets his tail butt absolutely handed to him by a Saiyan. But I do feel sorry for Broly. Broly is, if anything, a product of violence. He's a product of revenge. He's, bas he's very naive, he's very gentle, it's just that he's also immensely powerful. Now, it doesn't mean he wants to hurt people, but he's kind of forced to by his dad. Luckily his dad dies, so Broly gets a bit of happiness in, in the end, which is good. He gets a bit of freedom, he gets some friends, and he gets offering to be trained by Goku. But that's not what the story is, but that's not what the movie is mostly about. The movie is mostly about the punching and the action, and I have to say, that lives up to its namesake. This is basically just watching a really long episode of Dragon Ball Z. It's just lots of yelling, power-ups, punching, and violence, and all the good stuff. Lots of punching people through glaciers and down to the cores of the earth, fighting in lava, Super Saiyan modes, giant monkey modes, Super Super Saiyan modes, you know, all the good stuff, all the... You know, like, I have blonde hair, now I have red hair, now I have blue hair, therefore I am more powerful! Oh no, this guy has green hair, that means he's almost as powerful as me! Time to fuse! It's a... It's a good flick to watch. It's very much a good sort of... Here's the thing. I would recommend this to anyone who's a Dragon Ball fan. If you have watched Dragon Ball at all, then you probably know what's going on. And the little recap at the beginning will help you get you into the mood if you're not someone who's very familiar with the series. Because if you're someone who loves just an action fight or anime fights, you will appreciate this movie. The absolute magnitude they go to and the animation is beautiful for this. You're watching this and it's basically like watching Expendables Free blended with The Lost Action Hero and I believe it's called Demolition Man, putting all those together and then putting that into an anime and it's absolutely amazing to watch. So if you're someone who loves that kind of fight action scene violence, you'll love it. You'll be going, <laughs> If you're a big fan of Dragon Ball Z, you'll like it too. It's got callbacks to the series, it makes sure that's within a timeline, and it treats Broly, a character who is otherwise not canon to this point, very well. And I hope that Broly does reappear in future versions of the TV series, mostly because I want to see what happened with him in the future. Because, you know, we don't know what happened. It ended with him and his two alien friends back on the planet he was raised, kind of considering what they're going to do with their lives. But yeah, it's a good, it's a good movie overall. I mean, in terms of being a Dragon Ball movie, it's up there. It's really good. In terms of being an anime movie, it's also really good. In terms of being a movie movie, I don't know, it's not the best movie movie out there. Mostly because, you know, not a whole lot of character development. Well, the character development that's in there is good, but it does feel a bit rushed. But you understand why that's there, because, you know, it's Dragon Ball. You're here for the fighting, not for much of the character development. So, what do I say for this film? I'm gonna give it... I'm gonna give it six Broly's out of ten. Why do I say that? Well, don't get me wrong. I like Dragon Ball. I'll probably show this to people who like Dragon Ball, and I might watch it again one day if I can find it on DVD or on Netflix or something. But you know, it's a, uh, it's just fun. It's a fun movie. It's not a great movie. Obviously, a lot of effort was put into it, but it's a good movie, and so I would recommend it. Anyway, I'm Alex the Unquotable. Thank you for joining us for Anime Month, and I invite you to come and join us for the next video.